Race number five at Ascot on Saturday. We'll jump at 10 past three. It's the Glen Roy Chaff Handicap over 1,000 metres. In replay, we're going to go back to April and the run of Beautiful Mind resistance. Harry Thomas hit the front at the top of the straight. The favourite joined it. Beautiful Mind very quickly though. Two lengths Skin and Tens. Tonka Tough. Beautiful Mind at the 150 from Harry Thomas. Skin and Tens. The Ruffy is down the outside but it's Beautiful Mind kicking strongly. Beautiful Mind. Skin and Tens lunging at it. Beautiful Mind. Skin and Tens split it. Skin and Tens might have just... Beautiful Mind's last run was 217 days ago on the 6th of April. Hasn't had a trial leading in to her reappearance but uh, that race was over the four 1400 metres. Looking at her breeding, she probably wants that type of trip. So 1,000 is a little bit of a query, but this is going to be very, very fast run. She's got proven form first up, two wins and one second from three runs. And I think she's better than graduation grade. So with the map as it is, I'm going to put her on top. From number seven, Driftstar, I can't believe I've actually got this horse second, but the trial was really, really good. Um, Mitchell Pateman has won on this horse previously, so I'm going to give him a shot at Redemption, and uh, he's got the tongue tie off to, on Saturday. Number nine is McKeith, probably prefers the 1,000 to 1,200 metres from what we've seen in Australia. Uh, she's got a wide gate here as well, and her best runs have been on tracks with a little bit of giving them. It's certainly going to be a firm track on Saturday, respect but only in the minors. And then number two, Metro Boy, got plenty of convictions this horse, loses Jay McNaught as well, replaced by Chloe Azapardi, who elects to ride Rebel Yell. Top selection in race number five is number five, Beautiful Mind, to beat seven Drift Star, nine McEdith, and two Metro Boy. Race number six at Ascot on Saturday, we'll jump at 3.40. It's the Amelia Park Handicap, over 1,400 metres. In replay, let's have a look at the first up run of Forgotten Star. Path called upon, balancing up and Silken Eyes had grabbed the lead from Song of Vincent. Sophie Song gets the split. Here comes Megazone though with a great burst. Megazone, he jumped up out of the ground, stormed to the front. Forgotten Star runs on with Rocky Path, but it's Megazone. Megazone, too good, beats Forgotten Star and Rocky Path. She's a really nice mare, Forgotten Star. This is a graduation race. I'm sure she's a genuine ratings horse. Gets gate number nine here for Emma Stent, who rides for her master in Alan Matthews. The replay race is over 1,200 metres. That was a little bit too short. 1,400 is certainly more suitable. I think she'll absolutely eat up the mile and beyond. She's far less exposed than most of her rivals here. Just the 10 stars. If she gets the right run and gets a sight of them in the straight, she's going to be really hard to beat. Goes on top from number nine, Zero Demerits, who comes out of races in which the form has been really, really franked. You're looking at the likes of Samambo and Laurentino on two occasions. Gate number eight here. Hasn't won at the track, but has won over the trip. Goes in for second. I think we can expect to run from number one here, Geiger Jim. He's a dry tracker, this horse. He's gone hopeless on wet tracks, but all six of his wins have been on dry tracks. In fact, he's got six wins, three seconds, and three thirds from 30 attempts on good tracks. Um, he gets Jay McNaught here. I think that's an eye-catching booking as well, down to 58 and a half. And then number seven, Smarty. Really hard to line up, this horse, but it has won three in a row at Kalgoorlie. Gets a lovely gate here, and Mitchell Payment rides for the Fernie Camp. Top selection in race number six is number 10, Forgotten Star, to beat nine zero demerits, one Geiger Jim, and seven Smarty. Race number seven at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 4.10. It's the Ballpoint Construction Fair Retha Stakes, a listed race over 1,400 metres in replay. Let's go back a couple of weeks to the listed Belgravia Stakes and focus on the run of Jericho Missile. Two lengths further back to dig deep, but War Saint with a kick. It's War Saint to the 200 by two and a half. Special choice. Dig deep is starting to charge, and so is Jericho Missile. War Saint's the leader. Look at dig deep and Jericho Missile. It's Jericho Missile erupting storms past them. Jericho Missile with a super win. I think there's some nice animals in the fair wreath of stakes. Unfortunately, from a death perspective, I think there's only two. I'm going to go with number two here, Jericho Musil. Was quite simply outstanding in winning the replay race, carrying 59 kilos. Was last for much of the contest, absolutely blew them away in the straight. No doubt at all the 1400 metres will be okay and gets a lovely gate in gate number four. The main danger, the only danger is number one, Dig deep, was only marginally less impressive than Jericho Missile two weeks ago. He's drawn sticky gates in both of his runs back since we're in the Katakata plate. He's drawn gate number seven here, gets the top weight as well. If gets the run of the race, can certainly win, but I think Jericho Missile is going to get a better run in transit. Then a big gap to number three, Red Cam Manny. He won his first two starts as a three-year-old before 
participating in what was a farcically run affair last start. The former stacked up out of it, it has to be said, but uh, you can put a pen through that and judge him on his run in beating the Covey by a bit over a quarter of a length. And then number eight, Bogart. Very unlikely, I would think, to turn the tables on Jericho Missile and dig deep, but goes in the minors quite simply because the race is very, very shallow. Top selection in race number seven is the classy number two, Jericho Missile, to beat one, dig deep, three, Red Cat Man, and eight, Bogart. Race number eight at Ascot on Saturday is the main event. It is the Waroa Lustia Stakes over 1,400 metres. It's the first group two of the WA season. We're going to go back to a group three, the Northerly Stakes and the run of Akinar Star behind those then when they'd straighten perfect jewel great shot is the leader though at the 250 from the velvet king and wrinkley followed further back by perfect jewel running on and so zach and our star as well great shot fighting the velvet king keeps coming and Akana star is flying late the velvet king got his head in front Akana star as shallow as the Fair Reetha Stakes is, well, the Lestia Stakes is very, very deep. Cracking race. Going to go with number four, Akanar Star. I thought he was the black booker out of the Northerly Stakes. He simply ran out of ground to overtake the Velvet King before the post came. He's had no luck in his first two runs this time in. His runs last year, in particular, winning the Bunbury Stakes over this distance, were absolutely outstanding. And I think he's ready to win third up. Goes on top. Only marginally, though, from number five, the Velvet King, He's had a trial since winning the uh, Northerly Stakes on the 19th of October and he beat a Group 1 sprinter in Malaguera in that trial. And uh, Darren McAuliffe is very bullish about this horse's chances. Also from the same yard is number one, Gatton. He comes back to Perth. He won a Group 1 in Melbourne, of course, the Maccabi Diva Stakes. But listening to DMAC, he seems to think that the Velvet King is their better chance in the race. Gatton may want a little bit further than the 1400 as well. And then number six, Arcadia Prince. Won three in a row over the 1400 metres before going to the spelling paddock. Did beat Samizdat in his trial. I know Samizdat came out last Saturday and won as well. It's a really, really good race, this. Top selection in race number eight is number four, Akinar Star, to beat five, the Velvet King, Wong Gatti, and six, Arcadia Prince. Race number nine at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 5.25. It's the Crown Sports Bar Handicap, over 1,200 metres. In replay, let's go back to the 26th of October and the Ascot win of Unitime together on level terms. One and a half more races. Beat the Devil searching for an inside run. Pikes at work now on Black Sabbath and Uni Time runs on. 150 to go. Metro Boy beat the Devil down on the inside but Uni Time claims them. Uni Time accelerates. Puts pay to them and draws clear late. Uni Time too good for Black Sabbath. Second more. I think a few of us, myself included, thought that uh, Unitime may well develop into a railway stakes horse, but uh, failed, it has to be said, over the 1,400 metres of Belmont before having a little bit of a break. Last time out, as we saw in replay, was really dynamic in winning over the 1,100 metres. I think this horse will go through the grades if the connections, Sharon Miller and the owners of the Roberts family, keep him to sprint distances. 1,200 metres, second up, really, from that uh, bit of a break. I think he's going to be very, very hard to beat. Goes on top from number nine, Black Sabbath, who beat all bar Unitime last time out. But there was a significant gap between the two of them, two and a quarter lengths. Number five is Diablery here. Forget he went round last start. He lost pretty much the margin of defeat at the beginning when he bundled the start. Does get a sticky gate here, but I do have a bit of an opinion of this horse. And he did run quite well in this type of event last campaign. And then number 11, Baron Bostock can win without surprising. His essential spice form is outstanding. He won a very good midweek race two starts ago, but his best is really good, but he sometimes just, just simply doesn't bring it. Top selection in race number nine is number four, Unitime, to beat nine, Black Sabbath, five, Diablerie, and 11, Baron Bostock. It's now time to nominate my best bets on the Ascot card. Going in race number three with number five, Western Temple, to go back to back. And the same in race number nine, number four, Unitime, to win two on the spin. It's easy to stay up to date with everything that's happening with Perth Racing. You can log onto our website or you can follow us on one of our social media channels. Until next time, bye for now.